So, recently I found it really difficult to find books that I actually like. Note that my average rating on the story graph this year is 2.95 stars. That's so low. For the next week or however long it takes, I'm gonna keep reading until I find a new favourite book. Knowing my luck, it will probably take 10 months or something ridiculous. <laughs> Let's start reading anyway, because this is gonna be a long vlog. I fancy something fairly light and fluffy for our first book. This is If I Can Give You That by Michael Gray Buller. I believe this is a book about friendship. I was also kindly given a copy by the publisher, which is very exciting. Um, yes, this is an advanced copy and I have not read it because I'm very bad. And it came out almost a month ago and I feel like I want to read something that's easy. What's this about? Let's read some of the blurb together, shall we? Then he meets Declan and a whole new circle of friends who challenge his understanding of himself. But as Gail's friendship with Declan deepens, Gail finds himself dealing with his mother's worsening mental health and his estranged father's attempts to reconnect. And Gail must decide if he can risk letting down his guard and opening up to those who care for him. Okay, this doesn't seem as light and fluffy as I was expecting, but it seems like there's some pretty deep themes in there. I hope they are handled well, because I feel like if they are, this could be a very good book. <clears throat> you know what? I'm gonna continue to be delusional about the fact that I may or may not have appendicitis. Could editing me please put, put up the delusional convince yourself meme? Delusion. <laughs> convince yourself. I have most of the symptoms, to be honest. Which is why I am going to the doctor. But I don't want to. <laughs> it's probably fine, I probably don't have anything, they just want to check me out. Now, I'm not being treated for appendicitis because if I was, I wouldn't be at home. But that doesn't mean it's not still appendicitis. So that, this is fun. Sir. What are you doing? How d how did you get there, sir? Another sleep deprived review is coming at you right now. So I finished the book in question, and I thought it was nice. You know, it's 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 a three out of five. It's nice. There was a romance in it. It didn't annoy me. I felt completely indifferent to it. That's progress, isn't it? I liked our protagonist's enthusiasm about the Great British Bake Off. That was that was quite fun. The book is told in very plain English, and I'm not I'm not trying to be snobbish or anything. I do not think that is a good thing to do or is fair to this book because I don't think it's like less intellectual because it's not written in Erin Morgenstern purple prose. It's just not what I personally look for when I read a book. I think there are a lot of very important messages in this book. It's definitely not as light and fluffy. Bigger trigger warning for... Uh, can I actually say this without getting demonetized or like banned on YouTube? Unaliving ideation? I've heard people use that phrase before and not get demonetized, so... It read very quickly, but then it's a young adult contemporary and if they don't read quickly then there's a problem. Yes, this book is kind of about friendship, but the friendship dynamics just kind of don't feel as developed as I feel like they should. I should know exactly who these characters are, but I didn't. But at the end of the day, I feel like that's maybe a little bit too harsh. I don't know. All you need to take from this is that I like the book. It's a three out of five, but it's not like a new favorite. So we continue reading. Sam is a cinnamon roll and we must protect him at all costs. The trend of me giving reviews at ridiculous times of night continues. So, I have finished this book, and hmm, what am I gonna give this as a star rating? Probably a 4, or thereabouts, between a 3.5 and a 4. But I think, I think giving it a 3 is too harsh, so I'll say 4. Now, the thing really separating this from being a 5 is the fact that I have no desire to reread it. I thought it was very good, I definitely cared for the characters, though I feel like when I was reading the last bit of it, it just didn't hit as well as I wanted it to, I just feel like it didn't have the punch that really would make me love it. In terms of what it's about, it's a very much kind of Erin Morgenstern type no plot just vibes. It feels very kind of autumn slash fall themed because there's lots of references to 
pumpkins and to rust colored leaves and it was just painting this very good picture of a wood in autumn it had a very clear vibe i guess but it just wasn't a new favorite book that i will think about for weeks to come because it just didn't have that impact on me but I still think it was good and I would still recommend it. We still have to continue reading and um, let's hope the next book's a five star. Next read is this one. Even if it isn't a five star, it will still satisfy my craving for a post-apocalyptic story like The Last of Us. Essentially that is what I've been craving ever since we finished watching the first series. <laughs> mm, what do you think I'm gonna say? Actually, where even is the book? So this book is essentially a collection of short stories linked to this pandemic, but the thing I'm having the most problem with is the way it is told. Because the first story I thought, okay, this this is really good, I want more of this setting, this world, these characters. And then it just ends after like 20 pages and then we're on to something else. And while the concepts explored in this book are actually pretty interesting, I mean, there's nothing unique about a pandemic, but the way that we're focusing on different aspects and different people and just different kind of sci-fi concepts. Like, it was quite interesting to be reading about a pig called Snortorius who can literally speak. Once again, it's not like that hasn't been done before, but it was quite interesting. I thought, oh, this is, this is quite an interesting concept. Um, I could recognise that even if I wasn't particularly enjoying what I was reading. But yeah, the biggest issue I'm having is that these short stories just jump about a little bit too quickly for me and it doesn't help that they're all told from first person perspective and all the voices sound pretty similar so it takes me ages to actually realize oh we're in a different person's head now yeah i'd rather this book was just told maybe he'd picked like three perspectives to tell this book in or the it's about 300 pages long so maybe 100 pages each he'd pick three concepts and he was just focusing on these three different characters uh, dealing with this pandemic going about their daily lives so yeah the concepts explored are really interesting but i just feel like there's ways of combining them all but i just feel like the short stories are too short in this and i just don't really i'm not very invested i'm just kind of reading it and not really taking in very much from it which is a shame because i thought i would at least quite enjoy this i'm just confirming my doubts that short stories aren't really for me unless they're kind of at least 50 pages long because one of the best books i've read so far this year recitative is actually a short story but that one's kind of like almost 50 pages long so you kind of get quite a good sense of who these characters are and what's going on whereas these ones are just a little bit too short and that is a shame because i'm kind of debating whether or not I should DNF because I'm kind of like 100 pages through and I'm not really enjoying it but maybe it will all come together at the end and actually be better but maybe if they were told from third person it would actually be better. I think I'm gonna put it down temporarily and move on to something else. My speaking exam is literally tomorrow. Help. So my speaking exam actually went fine. It was actually fine. I don't think I messed up on anything. I remembered everything I had to say. And um, I made my mum buy me a book. Actually, she agreed to buy me a book, but this is the book in question. It is The Banner Queens. And it's about, I believe she's like a widow or something. She's living in rural India and everyone thinks that she killed her husband. We don't know if this is true or not, but she kind of lets this rumor circle around because it means that she's left alone. But then these women in the village start coming to her asking if she can help them knock off their husbands. Anyway, I may have the rest of the afternoon off because I'm just very, very relieved. I actually had a fairly good day today. This is only French exam one. I still got three others to do before I've finished. I think whether or not this is, is a five star will depend entirely on how the last 60 pages or so goes down. Why does this always happen? If I made a video where I talked about the books I loved but can't ethically recommend, this one would be in it. 
I haven't actually told you what this is about. This is a horror novel about these three women who investigate this haunted house, but only two of them come out alive. And it's a lot about the radicalization process and also fascism, um, but at the same time it's a very horrific book. And I would urge you to be really cautious when going into it, even though I personally really liked it. I mean, like is a kind of weird word when describing the topics, the really horrific and disgusting topics that are focused on in this book. I would hesitate calling this gratuitous, because I don't feel like the author was covering these things as shock value. I feel like she definitely was trying to make a point by covering these topics, and she was trying to have a greater social commentary kind of wrapped up in metaphors of trauma and British society in the modern post-Brexit world. There's a quote on the front that says, this book is unlike er anything you've read before, and I think that's very true. While yes, it does cover the trope of the haunted house, I feel like it does it in a really new way, but then at the same time I haven't read a lot of horror, so maybe if I'd read a bit more this may not have surprised me and disgusted me and horrified me as much as it did. I think it's something that will stay with me for a long time. I feel like it's something that I will keep thinking about long after I've finished it. And that, for me, is the real makings of a five star. At the moment, it kind of sits at like a 4.5 because, I don't know, there's just like some little pinch of spice that just didn't quite make it in to this concoction. But I feel like I'm just being harsh and I should give it five stars because while I would urge you to look up the content warnings for this book just for your own sanity, I thought it was fantastic in the way that it portrayed all the things it portrayed. It's also very unique, and we did it, everyone! So, to summarise, I read If I Can Give You That, which I gave three stars. I thought it was just good, not incredible. Then I read When the Moon Was Ours, which I gave four stars. I thought that was a bit better, but I was a little bit disappointed because of how much I loved Late Claw by the same author. And then I finished reading this, which was a five star. So we've just had an upward progression throughout this entire video. But I'd like to say a big thank you for watching, and, you know, thank you for clicking. Thank you for potentially liking and commenting, because the algorithm likes that sort of stuff. But anyway, thank you. See you next time. Goodbye.